I think we need to take a regional based approach to uh, a local economic development. We need to bring together people from uh, different industries, people from education, people from local government. Um, I've had a chance to work with uh, a lot of local businessmen, local educators, um, through the work I, with KSB Hospital and also on the county board level uh, to try to put together an attractive package for people to, uh, to look at the Sauk Valley as a region with a region full of services. I think we can put together a compelling package for that. I've worked a lot on health care policy, uh, both on the state and federal level, so I think uh, going to Springfield and bringing kind of a perspective on uh, Medicaid reform is an important uh, is an important role that I could play. Um, Medicaid reform is an incredibly complex um, and uh, is a pretty daunting challenge, uh, but at the same time I think that uh, we can get together people from uh, physician groups, from the hospital association, uh, people from state government to take a look at our uh, growing Medicaid obligation and try to find a way that we can deliver care in a more efficient way and a way that's going to um, ultimately uh, treat patients better. We have a growing backlog of pension obligations. Uh, a lot of it has been because the state has missed its pension payments um, several years because it's been an easier uh, problem to kick down the road than whatever the current problem was. Uh, we do need pension reform. We, uh, we're not going to be able to meet our obligations going forward. Um, I think we need to bring in uh, local, um, local employees, uh, teachers, uh, IDOT, prison employees, uh, bring people together and be frank about the situation that we're facing right now. We're not going to be able to get out of this just by cutting benefits. We're not going to be able to get out of this just by increasing contributions. And we're not going to be able to get out of this just by trying to raise enough revenue to meet our uh, existing or backlog of, uh, of uh, obligations. So I, I think we need to bring everybody together and say, if we want to have the long-term sustainability in this program, uh, we need to make adjustments to the way that we fund this, uh, to the way the benefits are paid out, and to the way that the state handles its annual pa uh, pension payment obligation. Education plays a major part of local economic development. If our goal as a state of Illinois is to uh, provide a vibrant economy in which individuals can better themselves and make a, uh, make a better a life for themselves and their families and live in a, in a, in a community that's engaged and, and growing uh, and it is a good place to live, education plays a large part in developing the kinds of people who can support an economy like that. Um, I think we need to continue to have a strong uh, investment in education, but our investment needs to be targeted. We need to have uh, measurable results, uh, programs where we can uh, determine the effectiveness of those programs. Um, we need to say that at the end of the day, our, our goal in, in education is to graduate more students and to make those graduates career or college ready. Anything that doesn't help us get to that goal or doesn't help us get to that goal efficiently uh, needs to be on the table and say, is this a program we can continue to, to invest in? So it's not always more dollars that's spent. Uh, it's maybe taking a different approach to the way that we're going to spend those dollars or to the um, allocation uh, uh, priorities that we have for those existing dollars right now based on what we can prove across the state and prove across the country um, our effective practices. I think that uh, the expansion of gaming has for a long time been seen as free money or been seen as this uh, idea that we can get a little extra money for the state without really having any consequences to it. Um, I don't support the expansion of gaming right now because I'm worried about a few things. Um, first, the social cost that come, comes along with it. So uh, if, you open up a, if you open up a casino, if you expand gaming, um, there's always a certain percentage of the population who, because of a gambling addiction, um, is, is at risk and it, it kind of jeopardizes the social fabric that you have within a community. Um, there's also certainly concerns on the enforcement and the regulation side of it. So the, uh, the increased burden that it might place on local police departments or on the state police. Um, and then of course just with regulation from a, the, the statewide gaming commission to ensure that the, um, the casino is operating according to its, uh, its statutes. So I think some of those costs uh, that are associated with gaming sometimes are overlooked. Um, and in addition to that, even from a, just a purely logistical standpoint, uh, we have to recognize that just expanding gaming doesn't mean we're expand the total uh, pie that we're going to collect from it. Uh, we might just be cannibalizing existing business. You know, instead of going to this casino, you're going to go to that one. And uh, some of that might come from saving people from going out of state, but some of it might also come just from saying, I'm not going to go to the casino down the road in Illinois. I'm going to go to the one in my backyard. So we need to recognize that it's not all a 
it's not all an upside. It's not all free money. There's some costs that go along with that, and there might be some um, some burden that we place on uh, existing casinos uh, because of the expansion.